Welcome back, everybody, to another podcast with Mahogany Cast. How are you ladies doing this holiday season? I have to ask first before we jump into this. Let's I'm see. good. <laughs> <laughs> doing well. It's good. I'm good, too. Yeah, I, am... you have your tr- I don't know. You have your trees up, Christmas list yes. ready to go, you know, those last yes. minute details. <laughs> yeah. I put my tree up and I got a new tree this year. I got it at Costco in September. It's a fake tree. Mine is because I'm not dealing with, I'm not dealing with the, with all that. (laughs) And I was very excited because it's one of those trees where it has the clear lights and the color lights and you have a little remote so you can change it. So I change it depending on my mood. And ladies, <laughs> it has changed my life. I love Game it changer. so much. Very love it. fancy. Yeah. Yes. yes. Love it. Yes. I still do not. My brain doesn't understand how that's possible. Like, I don't get how it can be, you know, color. I don't either. Aren't, like, I don't understand. But I think it's a really cool thing. So. It's magic. And there's a setting where, like, it fl- it'll flash cl- the clear lights and then it'll flash the colored lights and then it'll flash the clear and flash. So you can have both at the same time. It's very cool. It's just because I'm someone who likes colored lights. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's because that's what I grew up with. And that that is just to me, that is Christmas. But I wanted to see what the like clear light love was all about and i get it it's just so bright your tree is so bright when it's just those those clear lights so i love it awesome like i have that for my cat tree because he's jumping in my tree so you're gonna get the color lights with the clear lights and (laughs) you guys being an animal parent for the first time during the holidays is very interesting if you have watched my stories you'll know about the cat and the tree the cat so in the tree. Dr. Susan that Lee. needs to be the a children's book. The cat in the, the tree. tree. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, that. I'm telling you, he, Miko, Jasmine's cat, has brought me so much joy just watching him on her Instagram stories of him just climbing that Christmas tree, playing with the bulbs, jumping off the tree. Like he's living his best holiday life. And I'm so thrilled for him. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's, That's what it's, what all, it's about. all about. No, speaking of that, we got to jump into this movie. We had to jump into the first Mahogany Christmas movie. We got to talk so about exciting. this. So exciting. I know. Okay, let me just read, you know, what the movie's about, just in case anybody hasn't checked out, you know, our previews or anything. So the holiday stocking. A new angel gets a chance to address his one regret, that he didn't help his sisters rekindle while he was still alive. Returning to Earth as a stranger, he gets each of them to uh, revive their parents' old tradition of encouraging charity. And this stars Nadine Ellis, uh, Tamala Jones, BJ Britt, and my count Williamson. Hopefully I pronounced that right. <laughs> and speaking of Nadine Ellis, if you guys not have checked out myself and Rachel's interview with Nadine, it is definitely on um, YouTube, any location where you can listen to our podcast for um, Hallmarky Podcast. She was a delight. I loved her energy. And she talked about Joyful Drake, who we interviewed months prior as well. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I know, because that's the start together and let's stay together. Mm-hmm. So that was a great opportunity to talk with her about. Yeah. I want to get your thoughts and feel about the movie, ladies. Let's see. And- Dory, you go first. Oh. Anne, go first. Oh, me. Oh, gosh. Okay. I know. I, I enjoyed the movie. Um, I thought, you know, it was definitely, which we knew from the previews, you know, very family focused. And, you know, I liked that. I thought that that was, you know, the holidays and family go hand in hand. So it's a perfect time to, you know, heal relationships, rekindle relationships, forgiveness, healing. And I like that they kind of, you know, did that with the sisters 
but also the brother. And he got to be a part of it, but also learn maybe what he could have done better, you know, when he was alive, which I thought was a good point to make. So I thought I like the family dynamic and energy. The cast is great. Um, they have good chemistry. Um, I, I enjoyed the movie. Amazing. Dory, what'd you think? You go next. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it too. I thought that the cast all had really great chemistry. You know, like I really bought Marlo and Danny as sisters, even though they had been estranged. When they, even though they were mad at each other, when they got together, they still had that like sister energy and were teasing each other and having a good time. I really loved the theme of family like Anne mentioned and I also like I like that it kind of touched on well not touched on there was kind of this whole interwoven theme of loss over the holidays because I think that that's a really real part of celebrating Christmas and it's kind of it can be bittersweet right when the people who used to gather around your table and light and decorate your tree are no longer there and so I love that they kind of I love how they handled that with the brother being there, but not but in a different form. So he could kind of look on from the outside and help repair what he hadn't been able to repair during his life. I thought that was really sweet. Yeah, I thought this was definitely a success. I thought this was a great for being the first mahogany Christmas movie, I think it was a great job. I thought the soundtrack was the best uh, Hallmark Christmas movie soundtrack ever. Every song was a banger. Like, it just, I loved it. <laughs> We're going to get into the fashions a little bit. Loved the fashions. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Yeah. Well, I had not watched a movie in like two weeks, I think. As y'all know, you know, I had my grandmother passed away and I was, you know, just as the oldest trying to be there for my dad. I'm good, you know, but I was like, I don't know, like, how do I get back into the spirit of sitting and watching these movies? And I'm so grateful that we had this one. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, this movie just... I don't know. It's like, Dory, I think it's that you said it in the movie that we talked about last time. Like, you didn't realize how much you needed this movie. Right. And that's how I felt about this one. I was like, I'm glad this is the one that we are covering because this is the one that got me back. In. I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready to watch all the things now, you know? Oh, I love that. Just really, really heartwarming. It was fun. I mean, it had some serious stuff going on, but it was never like not a fun movie to watch. Mm -hmm. And the acting was fantastic. When BJ Britt tears up at the end, oh I my God. lost it. Oh my <laughs> it God. Just, it was so good. It was so I was, good. Yeah, I mean, hug with it's the hard three to pick a favorite. Forget yes. The, it. The Forget it. Hug when he's standing at the door. And they look, and for a minute, it's him. And then he turns back into the angel. I was like, oh my gosh, like so many little nuggets. And I know we'll, we'll get into them. But yeah, I just, Definitely. it's hard to pick a favorite because I feel like each mahogany movie has been great and they just get better and better. But like, I think hands down, maybe because this was Christmas, I'm like, this is, this is the one. If you haven't watched a mahogany film yet, start with this one and then work backwards. Like, it was great. I don't yeah. Know. My what do you feelings, think, Jazz? My feelings. Um, this was to me a ten out of ten for me. This made the stamp of my first mahogany film for the holidays. They knocked it out with a bang, and you know I share sympathy with you, Bray. Like I'm going through my first Christmas without my little cousin, who's like my little brother, and I found this little Hobby Lobby little ornament, you know, about, so I wish I could just grab it real quick, but talk about, you know, how you're missing, like someone's missing, um, for, you know, for the holiday, but they're here for in your memory. So I got myself one for my tree, which Miko did not knock down. So I was really happy about that. <laughs> and then two, I got my aunt wants to mail that to her so she could have it as well. Cause it's going to be, 
it's those holiday moments that's mm-hmm. gonna be you know but at the same time i'm sitting here like this cast everything in between like memory and traditions memory all these different things that i would have done as a kid or growing up i'm like this is the Hallmark movie that we needed, the Mahogany movie that we needed to say, we are here. This is our moment to shine. And we're giving you this holiday movie as from the heart. We're killing those emotions that have, you know, the Rami and my family and how they can mend. I'm like, this is it, you guys. Yeah, it was this great. This is the movie <laughs> that we needed. That's right, Miko, because you watched it too. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, this amazing movie, let's talk about this cast. Like, they yes. gave us the cast that we needed in our lives. Yes. I know you know some of these faces, ladies, from movies, TV shows. All throughout tour, because mind you, BJ Britt was tweeting with us the whole entire night, mind you. So we were having <laughs> a ball watching this movie. He seems so into it, which I just, I love that. Like I saw him promoting it before, you know, it mm-hmm. came out and he seems so into it. So I yeah. hope they, yeah, use him more. He's great. Yeah. yeah Hello, he's new wonderful. Hallmark hunk. Okay. Thank oh my you. goodness. Thank you. Oh we'll talk about that later because, because the angel herself, I, I swear, with her, with her fanny pack, I was like, it should have been first of all, I was a angel too, try to hit on like, you know, his, um, his angel cover. I'm like, no, like that's that's our job. Let me hit on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, she didn't. Yeah, I, I don't think the angels know what type of body they get till they do like a stranger cover up to go back to Earth. But <laughs> if it's if it's like B, BJ Brent, we will take yeah. it. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he seemed pleased that that was the body he got. So yeah, yes. That and part, so you know, Jones, <laughs> like. Tamla Jones, iconic. She's been in all these movies that we've seen her on TV show, like from mm-hmm. The Woods, everything in between. You know, Lady and Ellis, if you um seen her anywhere from um, Let's Stay Together, uh, from all kind of people. Like, and let's not forget my cat, Wilkinson, because every time on the tweet, it didn't matter how many times I saw every 10 minutes, you saw that same meme of him being Troy from Wayne to Exhale. <laughs> I sat here like, that is Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that they showed up, you know. It's always fun when they are sitting on Twitter with us talking about the movie. Yes. Yeah. That is fun. So special. Yeah. We love you over here, BJ. We love you over here. Yes, we oh, do. Please. And you're we want to see more of please. you. Yes, please. <laughs> if you're listening, Hallmark, yes. we need more Definitely. of him. He did like Yeah. He he's was a great actor. Like a great actor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, this is actually his third uh, holiday movie, actually. He has two other holiday rom-coms. I can't think off the top of my head, but I remember looking it up. I'm like, oh. I know he had one with Jessica Lowndes. Yes, that one, yes. On Lifetime, a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, he will always be RJ Angel. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's I like RJ Angel, back. really? When they gave when she gave him that name, he was like Angel. <laughs> seriously, I loved that. Yeah, part. It's like, like it's different. It's his name was like Art. Art. <laughs> and like Art so Angel. Funny. <laughs> well, and you know what? I leave it to her. the teenager man to p- keep him on his toes. Oh, for real, <laughs> she was on it. But I also liked her, like the angel in charge. She was making me laugh too. Like, I don't know. Yes. I just really liked the whole cast. She was cracking me up, like you said, with her little fanny pack. Yeah. And she was just appearing out of nowhere. And he was looking crazy on the street fighting yes. with her. Oh, like, I thought that whole I thought their whole dynamic. I was like, no, no, no. It was so funny. I thought it was funny. It was corny, but it was just funny when she said. That's above my prayer grade. Yeah, I liked that too. <laughs> I was just like, it's so corny. I don't care. I love it. It's I loved it. Yeah. I was bowling a perfect game again. <laughs> okay, her off. <laughs> She's like living her best angel life. I loved her, you know, silver, shiny outfit. She was just like, it was yes. a fun depiction of an angel, right? You know, I liked that. Yeah. Retro. She's doing that little retro, yeah. like from like you know, even like a little eighties flair. Yeah, totally. Like, you know, like a the little ones that people wear, like you know, with some yep. cow, some cowgirl boots, cowboy boots. 
Very cute. Why don't you go Loved tour her. With, like, you know, one of the greats. <laughs> Loved her. But no, I, I, I do too. Let's talk about the holiday stocking game. I know that the holiday stocking game was created by their parents um, to answer riddles correctly um, so they can win. So the winner can choose the good deed for the family to do together. Have you ever done a good deed or volunteered during the holiday time? And how has that impacted your character growing up? Mm. I know that's hard, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, well, I guess it's not really volunteering, but I used to, uh, we used to do this thing called the angel tree. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was in the military and we would, um, I think we would, we were able to request these bags and I would go to the Salvation Army and pick them up and they were empty, of course. And like all of the students would like adopt kids and like it would give us a list of like what they wanted or whatever and the like I was so proud of these like 18 19 year old kids because they would literally go buy these kids whatever they wanted and then we would like deliver them and you know we never got to see them or see them open them or anything but it was just like you know my heart would be so happy because I'm like these like young Mm -hmm. young people would just be like oh she wants a a Kindle from Amazon I'm gonna get it and I'm like that's kind of expensive, but if you want to get it, go ahead and bikes and basketballs and book, just like whatever was on the list, like they would actually get it. So that was, uh, I really miss doing that, but that would probably be during the holidays specifically, like the thing that I was always doing. Yeah. We used to do something similar when I was younger. The church that we went to, they would have a tree where you could pick a family to adopt and you would get them gifts and, you know, donations for their children and stuff like that. And so that was I always really liked doing that. And my mother, my mother, like, loved that tradition. She would love to, you know, pick the family for us and all that stuff. And in my current job, we actually do the same thing, like as a department we pick a family in need. I work at a cancer center, so it's usually cancer patients and we pick a family and help just try and help to make their holiday season a little brighter. Cause obviously dealing with, you know, an illness like that during the holidays, like a lot of these kids, like, you know, it's just sad. Like a lot of kids are in the hospital over the holidays getting treatment and they can't leave. And it's like anything you can do to get them a toy or something can really lift their spirits. And then for myself, a new thing that I've been doing the past few years is, so I love me some Black Friday. I love, I love a sale. <laughs> I love to shop. <laughs> I love it. And so, but what I've also come to love is Giving Tuesday after, you know, the Cyber Monday and Black Friday and all of that. And so every year I try to pick, like, I'll do some research and pick a few new charities to donate to. And so that's kind of become a favorite tradition of mine. I started doing it kind of either right around the pandemic or pre pandemic, I was like, you know, I just want to see what else is out there because I have, I always have my causes that I love to donate to, but I try to like find new ones. And it's really so much easier to do on giving Tuesday because everyone is kind of publicizing it and tweeting about it. And so I've learned so much about all of these organizations that are doing things I had no idea about. Yeah. So, yeah. That's beautiful. I love that. Why did I not? Why am I today years old when I learned that it was Giving Tuesday after Cyber Monday? Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. Now I kind of get it when my university does like the Giving um, Day where all the like parts of the whole um, campus in, in the medical department, everybody's like, donate to this or that over here promoting like, you know, my anthropology department. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. I think it's because I work at a nonprofit. So Giving Tuesday is like a thing, you know. Mm. So when I started working there, it was a very big deal. And I and I think I felt the same way. I was like, what's Giving Tuesday? I didn't know this, that this was something official, you know. And I started working there about six years ago. So now I am very aware of it. It's a very big donation day. So yeah. Check it out. See what's out there. See what new causes you can give to. 
I don't know, makes you feel good. And it's a nice kind of balance to all the the like hyper consumerism of the holidays and this emphasis on like getting gifts for people, giving gifts, buying gifts for yourself. It can feel very, very commercial and you know, this this is a nice balance to it. And listen, I am not knocking the commercial. I just said I love Black Friday. And I just said I yeah. love to shop, y'all. You know, it's just a nice balance. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. I think the biggest thing for like us as a culture is just time. Like time is so important to anybody. So even if it's not financially, just like giving your time, like when we lost my grandfather to Alzheimer's, I like went to the Alzheimer's Association and took some classes and I started like doing little like one hour classes, you know, in the community. Like they'd be like, you know, go to this place and, you know, educate these people on it or whatever. And it's like, that's something so simple. It's like an hour out of your day, you know, and it's like, it literally like, I'm not putting any money into it. It's just, you know, a couple of hours randomly throughout the month. So, you know, this movie, I think really highlights the importance of it and how fun it can be too. And you can like network and make friends and yes. yeah. Well, what's that old, saying, the that old saying is, um, charity starts at home or charity begins at home Mm -hmm. or whatever. And I think that that's Mm -hmm. a really good point. Like you don't have to give money or even when somebody passes away, just calling a friend to check on them and having a conversation with them and just lending them your ear, you know, that's giving too. Yeah. It's just be, you know, being there is sometimes the greatest gift. Yeah. That's right. I was really struggling to think of something, which is, um, Really sad. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I just thought of things. That's you no. Know, if you're learning like about organizations now, and like, or even trying to go back in the past, like, have I done any uh, volunteer? Have I done this or that? We're opening up the floor for all the homeworkies out there, you know, to try to get in the spirit. And it doesn't matter if you have to do it during the holiday; it could be off season as well. Yeah. I was trying to think about Christmas specifically, and there's something my parents do, and I remember I've di- I've done it with them um, before at Christmas. Every they are on some schedule, but their church they it's like it's usually a certain day, like on Tuesdays, certain Tuesdays throughout. And I happened to be there in town when they went um, a couple years ago. It's a, called Trinity House. So the church, their group provides food uh, for men at the Trinity House for that, you know, whatever that night. And then you sit with the men and you eat dinner. And these are men who are recovering from being homeless, who have found jobs and it's a place for them to live, to eat, to, they also have like certain chores they do to, you know, since they live there, uh, they have to do certain things. Um, So they're trying to, you know, pick their lives up and, um, you know get better and <clears throat> get, you know, the things that they need to be able to build up again. And, um, yeah, the, you, they, the men each kind of like share like some of their story. Um, and then you also share just some, after they share like some of their story and how they got there, which is really good to like put a face in a story to, mm-hmm. you know, unhoused and homeless people and how they're trying to get better and to what put them in that situation, so I think that's a great part of it is really, you know, looking somebody in the face and, you know, them telling you your, their story. And that puts 
you know, a name and a face to that, to that um, just whole horrible issue we have in this country. But then you share, you know, some about something about yourself or just something you're doing for the holiday. That's what we did that time um, or just something else. And um, yeah, you just kind of chat with them and stuff like once everyone's done, um, you know, sharing. And so, you know, get to eat together, bring them some good home cooked food, help them, you know, clean up and they show you like where they live and, you know, their whole like they have this whole ranking system of different colors that they, you know, go to once, you know, as they're living there. Um, it's called Trinity House in downtown Atlanta. Um, and it's a great organization helping people of all nationalities, all religions. And yeah, so that's something my parents are really good about um, doing things I should, um, you know, take after them is my dad always um, at the end of the year, he always, you know, gives to something that's helped me during the year, whether that was the Wesley Foundation when I was in college or my church or the therapy, you know, center that I went to. He always likes to make a donation to something that he feels has enriched my life. Oh, um, that's which is so just a really nice sweet. Thing to um, yeah. He's, he's so generous. Um, and he has other organizations and stuff he gives to, but he always wants to make sure he's giving back to people who he feels have given to me. Um, which is just what really a sweet. dad. I just want to highlight yeah. that because I, I know. Great. I love that. Great. And sometimes he'll ask me, he's like, you know, what should I do? Or he's like, this website's bad. Like, why is it so hard to find the giving tab? <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, this is where you go to do it. <laughs> That's really nice. See, they need too. to make it easier. That's really nice too. Cause it like opens up a conversation with the two of you. Like what really helped you this year? Like, tell me more about that. I want to know more about, yeah. you know, this organization and what they've done to help my daughter. That's so sweet. And that's such a good idea. Yeah. yeah I love that. It leads into like, you know, family traditions as well during the holidays and what, uh, what happens if you just volunteer or you do different things, it comes into like a family tradition and it, you know, it leads on to the next generation kind of passing it down, passing down the torch and like, mm-hmm. like a little spark in your in yourself to give back. And like I said, it doesn't have to be during Christmas time, which, you know, everybody gives during Christmas time, but it happens anytime throughout the year as well. Right. And, you know, it, it just warms my heart just hearing the stories and thinking about myself as well of what I've done growing up. If I remember the first time we we're doing, I actually volunteered for years growing up, as, as a kid, you know, helping out the community center with older people to, I remember in Girl Scouts, we went to a retirement home and we sung Christmas carols as Girl Scouts or also just helping in different um, avenues, either with foster care or anything in that nature, just what, what Anne said, whatever, you know, how your dad's my, your dad's my hero at this moment, like doing things I for, know. you know, his heart, like, you know, that, you know, even for you and like thing that you were interested in, he put time and effort to volunteer or to give back in those and she's like, that's beautiful and amazing. And we're not even in the movie yet where I'm still starting to cry. But we <laughs> just see just so much about, you know, just giving back and just, you know, and learn about different charities, what we can get into. And if Hallmark is, if you guys have any like charities or anything that you do that you're giving back or, you know, you know, interested people may want to know, drop it down in the comment section, like tweet about it. Like let us know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The charity that you're in- interested in or what you do. And maybe we may look into that and maybe, you know, donate. I know I'm trying to get back into doing cancer stuff and be able to, you know, for risk cancer awareness. So I'm just over here like, this is the perfect time to sit and watch this movie and just talk about, you know, what we, what you can start as a family as well. Mm-hmm. And this is beautiful. Like this movie is definitely have, making us have this conversation, but in a positive light. And speaking of this movie, we definitely have to like talk about these love interests in this movie, because even though RJ is here to, you know, be with the family and, you know, reconcile the sisters, but he over here playing matchmaker during the holiday season. <laughs> he did. I know. I'm like, a sly. I'm a sly. Say, sly. <laughs> like yeah, he's he out here a like, lot of assignments. 
Yeah, yeah. like he's like, mm-hmm. I, I, I gotta go back. You know, I, I have unfinished business first of all. Second of all, oh, let's make sure my sisters know about the game and just seeing the stalking itself and the you no know, that first reaction the sister seeing like, mm-hmm. wait, that's that's mama's stalking. Like, but this is mm-hmm. mama's handwriting. It just like it, you know. You know how you pick up that one item, like, you know, or you smell, like, some type of, like, dessert or type of food. You're, you're transferred back to that thing, that family member or that time and place. And that's how the yes. sisters felt. Yes. Their yes. first. Oh, yeah. With, with, with RJ. Because we're like, we don't know you. <laughs> what you doing? Right. I don't know where I live. But that was yeah, funny throughout the movie. They're like, is he, how is he everywhere we are? Like, this man is stalking us. Like, what is the deal? He's showing up yeah. everywhere we are. I thought <laughs> I it was so he, funny. Nadine said, he and she said, and he's always wearing the same clothes. <laughs> 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 I was dying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I even posted online on Twitter. I was like, hold up. At least Dudley had an extra change of clothes. <laughs> I know he really could have had I wish he had you know a casual outfit to go along with the full you know coat and but he looked handsome in that long did. brown coat he oh he did, did. So. that camel he coat did. he wore it well he wore it well yes. oh my goodness but yes I just love the like the love interest with with Danny what was his name I know his name in real life his name is uh, is Karen I love him. he's in all these different I was getting movies. confused was his last name Woodson yes what was yeah, his Woodson. first name it, it was Anthony Anthony Wilson yeah his name is okay. Anthony okay okay yeah because even his mom will try to hook, up, hook him up too <laughs> yeah he was so and he was cute too he was adorable <laughs> I loved that part too. His mom, when she was in the the doorway to the kitchen watching them and she made her little comment and he just looks back at her like, could you please yeah. not? I hope we see you around here more yes, often. Yes, I loved it. Because the look on her face, she knew exactly what she was doing. I thought it was really cute. But for real though, did that kitchen scene not turn from sweet to awkward oh real my quick? Gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. I was oh. like, oh no. Yeah, I was like, girl, so why do you have him on speaker? Why is she on speakerphone? Take her off. Where's your headbuds? Where yeah. your headbuds? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, you yes. don't do that. You don't no. just be on speaker when no. you're like in the other person's establishment and they're like, right? I mean, and you're yeah. talking about them. What? Oh my yes. God. Oh my God. I have to say, that's probably the one slip up in the movie, but I understand like it it, it changed things. I get so it. But I was it. like, girl, so don't nobody they- talk on speakerphone like that, especially no. if you're talking about the person that like you're hanging out with right now. No. Yeah. And his reaction, but their cold as is just so ice. Good. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I think you should leave. You know, it's yeah. getting late. I think it's you getting should leave. late. I, I think like, you need oh, to leave. I was like, dismissed. oh, I respect that. I would be offended and upset if I was. Yeah, there. I was like, for I, sure, I for that. sure. I mean, yeah. he's. She's lucky that he was so nice about it. You know, he didn't raise his voice. He was just like, I yeah. think yeah. you should yeah. leave. He didn't just right. like go off on her, because right. Somebody else probably would have went off on her and been like, oh, well, you just think I'm da 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 and I'm below right. you and I'm this. And yeah. <laughs> we and appreciate she insulted, that you didn't, you know. Have, have and she insulted not just like him, but the work he does, like his life's mission. Like that's a, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. And that's why RJ is here. To like, you know, fix, fix that heart. Of <laughs> to hers. fix it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's right. She okay, needed talk, it. Okay. Let's talk about, man. Okay. Let's talk about Marlo. Like, in, you know, with her husband, you know, his child, you know, because she's she taking care of, the, take care of her mom's bakery. Like, she's working a lot. Yeah. But, but when, she, when she had that date, though. Oh, she was gorgeous. When he walked in and looked at her, he was, I, I cried. <laughs> Like how he was like, who are you, my beautiful <laughs> wife? Wow, like he was. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, she was gorgeous. It, it was more of like we about to have another baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like, I, he told her I love. He like kissed her and told her I love you. I was like, oh. and I think it was beautiful that they didn't give them like a marriage in trouble arc. Yes. Like they're a happily married couple. They're just like in that 
stage where it's like he goes to work I go to work we're raising our teen daughter we love each other we're both in it but like there's not really any romance there yeah and so I thought that scene was just like so powerful like you still have to remember to like enjoy each other's company yeah I think that's so important because that's what they always say they're like if you feel like you're in a rut or like you don't they're like remember the things you did at first like going on dates yeah, you know, getting up to taking a getaway, like you know, those are the things that you know you have to make time for, so you can you know ha- connect and feel some of those sparks again, and just you know connect with your person. And and so I was glad she got some time because I mean, yeah, if he goes on the road and she's at the bakery at like four a.m. to you know whatever, like every day, then it's like ships in the night. Yeah. Um, so she needed she needs some help so she can have some time to be able to, you know, connect with each other. But it was, it was sweet. I really like that. I know. I agree. And Kelly watching your story. So I'm like, I want to go to Palm Springs with my boo. He, 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 <laughs> oh, no, no, I want to go to Christmas stuff. I'm like, go ahead and pay. Make your ass stories, you guys. Okay. Yeah. If you want to know about keeping this park alive, do marriage, go to the ass uh, stories. Because her story is lit. <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> I feel like both sisters, like both sisters had so much growth. I think yes. Marlo's was probably the one that I connected with the most because it was like about her marriage and also about having like a teenage daughter and like mm-hmm. her, her daughter's a teenager. Like mom's not cool. I don't want to hang out with you. But like we mm-hmm. slowly see her like being invested in the project and hanging out more at the bakery and helping out more at the bakery and finding you know, other teenagers to hang out with at the volunteer opportunities and wanting to be there. And I was just like, I don't know. It's just, it was, it was awesome. And it was cool to see her. She told her mom, like, I don't, I don't like you working so much or something like that. Like Mm -hmm. you're working too much. And it was just like that moment of like seeing that your mom's a real person, (laughs) you know, besides your mom. So yeah, I, I loved Marlo's character. I really I really love yeah. Marlo. She was also like, funny. She was so she funny. Was. Like her facial, yeah. I mean, her facial reactions when, to things. When she had to walk out into the kitchen. <laughs> yes. So funny. Like she cracked me up when she, and the way she yeah. has kind of like a short fuse and how Danny would just wear on her nerves <laughs> and she would go off. I'd be like, I love Marlo. That is too real you know and the, and it was so funny it's crazy because every- marlo's the youngest i know she's <laughs> she's, she's, she's the, the baby youngest. she's the baby and she would go off i was cracking up when she like i just loved how fully formed these personalities felt because you know how sometimes you watch yeah. these movies and you don't really like you don't really get to know the character. You kind of don't feel you don't get to see their quirks and their unique traits. They just seem kind yes. of there. I felt all like all of these characters were fully formed with these awesome personalities that showed up immediately that showed up instantly. Like yeah. even when the scene with Marlo, when she first gets the note and her daughter didn't clean the, house and she's yeah. just like girl she's like what did you do I told you to do this like she you could tell right off the bat like oh that's who she is like I love her she's mm-hmm. so funny and when her daughter was saying that she didn't want to volunteer and <laughs> Marla was like oh you don't want to okay then you are like you I am not raising a brat <laughs> I'm not raising a spoiled brat like have fun, like you better get into it, girl, because you're gonna do it. Oh, I loved it. I thought it was so funny. But you she just was asked me character. for three hundred dollar boots. Three hundred oh, dollar yes. boots. Like, what she said? Are you asking me or telling so me? Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! <laughs> I love Marlo. I was like, did my mom step in and help write this script? Because hundred <laughs> percent. That yes, that is. Uh, uh, Cheryl Benford special <laughs> if I ever heard it too are you asking me or are you telling me <laughs> right 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 watch your tone yeah watch <laughs> yeah. that tone yeah. <laughs> but I love that you said that because even in the beginning when like we have that the scene where they were kids I was like okay this is the youngest 
this is the sister yes. that's like, you know, she's taking pictures. You can get her personality. He's the only boy. He's the mm-hmm. tallest. So I'm, I'm thinking he's the oldest. Like you learn so much about them in that instance. So yes. when we get to them as adults, I felt like, okay, I know who these people are. So 100%. Yeah, they felt like fully fleshed out. Yeah. yeah. Man, like I'm going to keep it real. Like even like already was doing like his like romantic moments here and there, like like even here had her little boo thing because dad was like, "Who is this?" Like, <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, not too close. <laughs> no <Okay>. man. <laughs> I loved that. I loved it. Okay. I was dying. Because I didn't feel- realize that like there might be a boy coming with them. He was like, "Ah ah 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 ah." I know he said, I've been I'm gone not ready for a couple weeks, but like, <laughs> what has happened? When he said, "I'm not ready," I was like, "Oh, oh my god!" Because no. usually in Hallmark movies, right, the kids are either like kids yeah babies uh, but i mean in this is our, our second mahogany movie where i feel like we got teenagers and we let them be teenagers like mm-hmm. let's let them be teenagers and feel for real and mm-hmm. i loved it when he was like i'm not ready mm-hmm. you're sitting too close <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is a very <laughs> real father-daughter moment mm-hmm. yes definitely definitely and you know what this movie definitely had its moments where it was infused by, I feel like it was inspired by different movies. Like it was, a, it was a matchup between the preacher's life, but it makes a soul food to make this movie galore. Cause mm. I was in here watching Danny and Marlo fight and stuff, like arguing about mm-hmm. how I took care of mama this, or I did that. I'm like, Ooh, why y'all remind mm-hmm. me of uh, Maxine and Terry off of the, off, off of soul food. Mm-hmm. Cause they, they vinegar oil. Cause they do not mix. And they were, they were giving me that energy. I feel like I know who's vaccine. I know who's Terry. Oh, this is mm-hmm. yeah. Lord. And we have you know, you know, we have RJ here. You know, being Dudley. Well, you no, know, a change clothes. Which we gotta help him out with some more clothes. Like <laughs> we do another angel movie. Can we have? More option for the angels, please. <laughs> we literally gave him a social media, but we did not give him a wardrobe. <laughs> it's yeah. so true. Because in the art, yeah. the social yes. media. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. From the hosts of the podcast Home for Hallmark, Molly and Brad now bring readers their debut novel, If Only Christmas Would Come, an instant Amazon bestseller, If Only Christmas Would Come, transfers readers back to Prince Edward Island during the era of Anne of Green Gables and features a strong-headed, cranberry-farming, jeans-wearing heroine and a playboy with a family secret. Reviewers agree this book is a fluffy, steamy, predictable Hallmark movie masterpiece, If Only Christmas Would Come, is available on Amazon and at Barnes & Noble now. Visit at Home for Hallmark for more info. That's at Home for Hallmark, and you can use our affiliate link in the description below. It's a different jacket. Yeah. At least a different jacket. Okay, but that is like one plot line that I was like, okay, because remember... Okay, what's the other sister's name? I'm blanking on this. Not Marlo. What's the other, the Danny? other sister? Danny. Danny. Danny had somebody looking into RJ, and I was like, we never found out. Obviously, there was nothing to you find unless they're just like, oh, you got what the niece found. Like, he's on social media. But, like, we never got anything with that. And I was like, yeah. I don't know. I, I wanted more of, like, do they ever get the feeling that this is their brother? I agree. Like, that's what I really wanted. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because yeah. he agree. was dropping clues, too. You know, not even on purpose, just, like, dropping clues. Even yeah, he was, he was his, slipping like, for Marlo, real. His nickname, <laughs> like, her nickname, Cricket. I was like... Cricket. I, I would have lost it right there. Like, how? Do, first of all, like, how did you know? I know you're talking about, I know your brother, but how, how do that's you... That's, like, a different kind of no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he said, like, the thing their dad always said. I was like, yes. do they know? I mean, and they kept saying, like, your eyes, like, you look so right. familiar. Have we met maybe, before? Maybe. Well, because yeah. even at the end, I was like, do they know? I was still like, I don't yeah. know if they know. I was and Danny know. took the picture, and I was like, please look at the picture Me and too. not be there. Or it be your brother when he was a kid. Like Me too. I, I, wanted to I was think. wondering about that. Yeah. I know. I hate that they didn't talk about. I don't like that they dropped that because I th- I was expecting them to like yes. look at the picture and there would be like yes. an empty space or something that where they're like, oh my gosh, did this man even exist? Like what, what, what did mm. we just go through? 
But yeah, he knew way too much. And even when he walked into the bakery that first time and he looks up on the wall and sees the picture of his mom and he's like, mama. He says, mom. And she was like, what did you just say? And he's like, oh, uh, yeah. Is that your mother? (laughs) It's like, yeah. uh, Sir? (laughs) Are you okay? I don't know. Oh, girl would have had to come get me because I think I would have slipped up. I would have been like, look, this is me. I'm here for 12 days. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Brie I wouldn't even wish- try to play oh, I, I oh, don't think look. I could have did it <laughs> Brie would've, she would have made it like a two days and then she probably would have just I'm not good with surprises <laughs> she would have been like listen y'all got 10 days to love each other again and then I'm leaving yeah. so get and on I'm it leaving. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Um, how do we feel about the conflict um, that was handled in the movie? Like, you know, try to reconcile the sisters. And, you know, I wonder if Danny Morrow ever wanted to make amends with RJ or, you know, Robert before he passed away. Because I know RJ came back to reconcile his sisters. And I know during the climax of the movie, he said that he had a part in that as well. That why he got right. the riddle. Right. And I want to know. Because I'm trying to remember from the movie, like, you know, because he was gone. He was he was gone for three weeks, so, you know, passed away. But, you know, did they ever want to reach out to reconcile as well? Yeah. I do wish there had been more about the dynamic of the siblings because they didn't really talk about him much. They didn't really like they never Thank sat you. down and had a conversation about. RJ. Robert. Yes. And like what yeah, our, happened our, yeah, Robert. and their grief. And they had just been at the funeral a few weeks before but they didn't speak like didn't that talk. was revealed in the first part of the movie so i do wish there had been a little more healing like i wish there maybe had been a more a conversation or two just talking about their relationship with robert and maybe kind of the nuances of that because we just didn't know much and because we do have the moment where danny says like listen mama's gone daddy's gone robert's gone we're you are my sister you are my family that's it and i wish we had had kind of a little bit of a of a separate conversation too that went a little bit deeper into like the sibling dynamics and what had happened over the years and how they had fallen apart fallen out and like we they did talk a little bit about their mother's care and how they all approached that differently I don't know. I think I just wanted like a little more healing for RJ slash Robert, you know, like I know that he, he accomplished his mission, but it would have been nice if maybe he had seen his sisters like, Oh, I wish, you know, I wish Robert was here. Like, you know, just, I wanted some more healing for him. I think. Yeah. I definitely could have used that too. That's so true. We never really saw them really say much about Robert Mm -mm. yeah but I do think it was a very realistic depiction of like you know when your parents are at the end of their lives I mean I know when before my grandfather my paternal grandfather passed away my uncle that was taking care of him definitely felt like I'm the only one here healthy you know taking care of him and it just caused all this this animosity and then with my grandmother like kind of the you know my dad is him and two siblings now and it's you know it's a lot when you're the one that's there so I thought that depiction was great but yeah I was like when you were saying that I was like dang nobody ever said dang I miss Robert or I wish I could call him one more time you know I think those things all the time but you know it was still I guess I wasn't thinking about it at the time because we are following Robert right essentially right yeah and he's like putting everything together so I don't know I thought it was beautiful like you you two are it you need each other more Mm -hmm. than you think because you're it and I know for me I wanted more about Robert too like you know about uh, his life like you know we don't look at the sisters like no Danny Siegel who got her new boo now we see Marla with her family like what about Robert like did Robert actually I don't, I don't remember if it was mentioned. Like, did Robert have a wife? Did Robert have kids? Like, was he just? I think they say said he was he going through marriage problems. troubles. Yes, okay, he yeah, okay, yeah. Marriage troubles. So we get nothing if he had a wife or he had kids or anything like that. Did he have? Did, they, did the like, did yeah. the girls have nieces and nephews 
from Robert. Like, right. I think it's one of those instances where we only have so much time, so they can't part. they can't give us too much, you know. know. But um, I, I think my favorite Robert moment, and this is just me being a sucker, when the sister, when they're little, she takes a picture of him. And like it zooms in and he's got to be like 12. And I'm like, oh, he looks yes. like he could be my son. You know, like you don't see 12 year old little black boys on Hallmark that often, you yeah. know, and then he ages so and then we find out he's an angel now. But I like and then when the sister when Danny gets the picture of him in the the card later on, I'm like, oh, that's our little Robert. That's him. <laughs> so yes. I was so happy to yeah. when he's taking that picture. I know he's cheese and so big. Happy. It's so cute. Oh, I know for this movie, I know this is like our 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 third mahogany film, which we're counting um, girl friendship as an honorary mention, by the way. Yes. But how has the holiday stocking compared to our previous uh, mahogany films? I know that this one was actually centered around family this time versus. Our unthinkably good things was uh, about three girlfriends, you know. Our second film, on the top of my head, I see their faces. To her with love, was dealing with you know, students, the teaching realm, also had a little bit to do with family, but this one in particular, this was definitely a family focus, and I appreciate. The Mahogany um, team to bring us that moment of family and just having that centered in a sense of like, yes, we can have girlfriend, uh, you know, girlfriend trips or having these um, friendship dynamics or romance, but it gave us a family feel moment where, no, let's talk about these things that are not being talked about and giving us a real um, realization. <laughs> yes, a realization, yes, Miko, realization of the movie <laughs> and talking about real things that really happened in families during this time frame uh, with loss or with traditions. And I actually resonated with this movie. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I like? I like that all of these mahogany movies have felt really different. And I appreciate that. I like that we're getting different storytelling, different themes, different focuses, different times of life, different phases of life with these movies. So I pre so it's hard to like compare them because they all feel different. And this one especially because this one is like a true Hallmark Christmas movie, what Hallmark is known for. So I don't know if I can like choose which one I like best because they're all so different, but I do mm -hmm. feel kind of partial to this one just because it is just so infused with like holiday spirit and goodness. And like, you know, this is what we're here for, right? This is usually what draws people to Hallmark is the holiday movies, so yeah, I like that they're all different and I hope that they keep taking chances and creating new stories and giving us new characters, new themes. Can so, yeah, I just say so like, different. can I say Chicago is beautiful? I mean, I know. I know we love our small town Hallmark Christmas, but these Christmas in the city movies have been fantastic. <laughs> I know. I love seeing like yes. the, um, the skylines lit up with, red and green or whatever for the holidays you see holiday lights all around it is it is a different it's different from a lot of what we yeah. usually see which is fun I agree Brie yeah I think they've really given us like you said Dory just different characters you know black women black men with you know all different kinds of jobs which is great to see like a variety um, you know covering different themes like family but also like friendships but also taking a chance on romance um and so i really i like the you know diversity of the the themes and the characters um you know that they've given us i think it's that's been really good um and i think of course you know christmas is a perfect time to have a more family-centered movie 
um, because you're with your family a lot and you do feel any kind of loss of relationship or fracturedness at the holidays. You feel everything is heightened and you feel that a lot. And, you know, suffering a loss of the holidays is really hard or just it feels so much more intense um, at that time. So I feel like this movie or family focus and loss is, a, you know, Christmas is a good time to have that kind of movie. And, you know, yeah, I think they, they've done good, great job. Speaking of great job, let's talk about the ending. Speaking of great job, let's talk about the ending. Because there's a lot of feels. I know we were crying. Like, y'all, Robert got his wings. <laughs> when he finally did the click and it worked. Oh, my God. He got his magic. I was like, I his magic. And then, you know, and then, like, Danny, you know, saying, oh, mama would say an angel got their wings. I know. And you know, it's rustling. And, oh, that was, a, that was a great just, like, tie in, you know, for the yeah. end with them in the snow. And, and just, they sang Hark the Herald Angels Sing a little. Oh, it was yes. just, that ending was fantastic. That was a fantastic ending. That moment with... RJ where maybe they don't know they probably don't know exactly what was going on like logically right yeah. but on a soul level yeah their souls understood that like this is this person means something to us maybe even this person is one of us this person is family this person is love this person has given us this beautiful gift and so i feel like on a soul level they understand it because they hug him and they're crying and why would they be crying yeah. because you know they've been annoyed with this man for all these weeks they're appreciative of what they did but they got their <laughs> box back you know but still they hug him and it it's probably just that feeling of love and family and it probably feels familiar too like the hug of a big brother and so maybe they don't understand it logically but they certainly understand in their hearts that like this was they feel, they feel yes. it and they understand that like this was a truly magical christmas experience with this person they'll never forget because even when marlo says like will you at least come visit it's like she's been she has been over this man from the second she laid eyes on him, but she doesn't want to let him go. She doesn't want yeah. him to walk out that door. Neither of them do. And I just thought it was such a beautiful ending. And the emotion that he feels having to say goodbye to his sisters, knowing that this is it, knowing that it he'll never God. come back and the tears in his eyes at the door. Forget it. Like I just found that so moving he did a wonderful job performing the complexity of those emotions of wanting to say so much to his sisters but not being able to say anything but not still conveying how special yeah. they are to him and how much he loves them oh beautiful a plus you know i mean honestly I haven't cried, but I like just you talking about it is I can feel like tears trying to form my eyes because the ending, I'm like an empathy crier. So basically anytime anyone cries in a movie, especially all three of them hugging and I was, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm done. <laughs> I don't know why it's like, I see people cry and have to cry. Thank you. <laughs> I always tell my friends, I'm like, you know, if you're dealing with something, I'll, I'll listen to you, but we're going to cry together because as soon as you start crying, I'm, I'm going to cry. Right. If you don't want to have that experience with me, don't talk to me because I'm just going to cry. And right. it's not about me. I'm just crying because you're crying. And I, just, right. you know, I just feel so much, you know, but that, oh, I just think the ending's so good. I, it was just so many different things I felt between them all being together and crying and like seeing how their house was set up. I know. And like the nostalgia and the feeling of that. Yes. And, you know, him going and them showing for a second him, you know, current or, you know, current him. And then him, you know, getting the magic and oh my gosh, it was just the snowing and, and it was just, it was beautiful. 
Yeah. When he said, I got to go. I was like, oh, <sighs> he has to go. And then he's standing in front of the tree and he has this, like his hand on his heart and he's just like looking up at the tree. I was like, oh, he is playing this role. And it was, I'm it's really one of those movies where I think every time you think about it from here on out, you think of the ending. And I think that is just 100%. the perfect way to, to go out. Like, you have those what if moments. We're always going to be thinking, did Danny look at the picture? What did she see yes, in the picture? Yes. You know, but I think at the end of the day, it was, he came there to do what he, what he was supposed to do. It was about ma- you know, helping the sisters get their relationship back. And that's what it's about. So it's not about what's in the picture as much as I wanted it to her to look at. It. It's <laughs> right. Me, just lay feeling this whole time. We're going to keep acting mahogany. What was on the picture? We need to see what happened on the what picture. What was hundred percent? What was on the picture? <laughs> what was their conversation after he left? Like, girl, can we please have a moment and maybe dissect what just happened with all of us, or do they just move on and they're blissfully unaware? Yeah. You know, so many questions. Yes. But the ending I thought was perfect. And I think I think it also like you know they had just rebuilt their you know gotten back together. This you know sisters. You're maybe not open to that, but I I do think, especially as as people of color, like we believe in that. You know, like it's so funny because like my dad texted me in the middle of the night last night at my nana's funeral. We played y'all know Gladys Knight. Neither one of us wants to be the first to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. We played that at her funeral because she loved that song. And he came home last night, and the TV was on, and that song was playing. And I was just like, she's just letting you know she's thinking about she's you. There. You know, like we. We believe, believe in that, that type of mm-hmm. woo-woo stuff, you know, mm-hmm. because I think it helps us, you know. No, so I'm like, maybe in their time, maybe it may be years later, but one of them's going to be like, I think that was Robert. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I was going to exactly say that because I can yeah. sit here and like think of different, you know, people passing away or we have different, like, you know, some, some family look like, like look, look like each other or like, oh, that they were such and such or just having strangers just remind you of someone. And mm-hmm. that's hundred percent true. We have those moments, you know. I'm literally talking to my cat Miko, like he bugged me half the time about like that. But sometimes I will slip out my little cousin's name Marvin. I'm like, he reminds me of Marvin so much, like his characteristics, like he will pick on me, he won't leave me alone, he won't, you know, those little kid moments. <laughs> I'm sitting here like 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 you know, you just in our community, this just happens where we believe that. And even though we look like you remind me of someone so much, it's like, you know what? They probably are you know, angel spirit, little beings or reincarnation that comes into that person's life for that moment of time in that season to help us heal, grieve, and just help us move on. And, you know, I think that what they got was that feeling. That know? feeling. That feeling. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Even though, like, you know, Robert moved on, I wanted to see his mama and daddy, you know, like, show up like, you did it, son. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. But I just agree with that everything 100%. It was just, this movie definitely gave me the feels, gave me the tears, gave me award-winning moments that that need to be given Oscars for, like, this is how you're supposed to do it. Hallmark, Mahogany, thank you for this movie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What were the ladies' favorite scenes? Because we were so many that we need to talk about. <laughs> so many favorite scenes. Honestly, this I think my hard. favorite is the ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like I said, the moment when she takes a picture of Ro- of, of Robert when they were kids. Like, I just, I le- that just was so special to me. I don't know. 
I know. I really, I really like the scene um, where you know Danny's on TV and her sister and the family's watching, and then you know she says, you know, she's stepping down and she's gonna, you know, invest in you know her time in helping charities and things. And her sister, like you know, Tamala Jones' character, she jumps up. She's like, "That's my sister," you know, yes. and she's like so proud yeah. and so happy. Oh, I really like that moment. And she names oh. dropped the name of the bakery and everything. I love it. I yes. like, directly yes. to camera. I was like, yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. But afterwards, when she goes off and she's talking to her homegirl and they're like, we did it, we did it, we did it. And then they start hot. They, the five. Right? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. The handshake. Yes. 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 The handshake was so good. <laughs> you know, there were so many great scenes in this movie. It's really hard to pick one. But one little subtle moment that I really liked was when Marlo's daughter guesses the riddle correctly for the first time. And it's the candy cane yeah. one. And she just gets so excited. And you can see that, like, the holiday stocking tradition will live on because it's like yes she has bought into it you know like this girl who started the movie not wanting anything to do with volunteering she didn't want to spend any time with her family that moment like she changes in that moment and she's kind of you know she's a little bit different for the rest of the movie. Like she decides to go sledding with her parents after she hears Marlo saying, you know, I just want, you know, I just want her to know how much I love her. And I think that she, it's kind of, it brought them closer together too. Like, yes, RJ's job was to, his mission was to bring Marlo and Danny closer together, but he also brought Marlo closer to her husband and to her daughter. And I just liked that little moment because she was so proud of herself and she talks about it multiple times. She's like, yes, I can't believe I got the riddle because she was so was not so here for it at first. She was like, I'm not even spending the time to try and guess this. Give us a second riddle. Like, I don't understand this. You know, she just went from that to, being so proud of herself and I love that you know when a teenager has that moment where they just feel so good about themselves because man it's hard when you're a teenager to feel good about yourself you know it's hard to feel like you've accomplished something and that you're you know part of this and you're in it and she just her whole demeanor changed she lit up I I really liked that moment I thought it was very subtle but sweet my favorite moment OMG, like there's so many. I know. Do I have to choose? Oh, wait, okay, okay, okay. One of my favorite moments, even though it was kind of like that big climax of it all, it was just RJ talking to Marlo. You know, how he how he felt he wanted to get his sisters together. When he called called uh, Marlo Cricket his like her name, mm. I thought I would have I would have cried. Cause he he had this Oscar moment of tears. Oscar just wanted to tell, like you know, this is me. Like, I love you so much. Yeah, you know, I want you guys to be. I'm like, I see her like, oh my gosh, why is this happening? I'm trying to tweet this. I'm like, oh my gosh, like to me, it was just like that moment of like, I love you, my sister, so much. I want you guys to be there. Just all you guys have, everything. I'm like in his power. I'm like. That that's that's love. That that's a big brother. That is love. Like he I can just get so to- bad for them, and they yes. are not cooperating. And he is just like bursting. You can tell he he wants to pull a Brie and just be like, "Can you listen? I am your brother. Get in line. Do what I tell you for once, Marlo. Right? Like, for once, the don't boss, give me attitude. You know, the just boss is only me. giving me twelve days. Right. I have twelve days." <laughs> But it's just the, the emotion, and it, and it, for me, it's more of like saying. I think also from maybe from like from a cultural background too. This you would have men tomorrow. They have to be strong. They can't cry. The fact that Robert was showing emotion, yeah, they showing like no, like that was beautiful. Like over his sisters, his yes. sisters. It's yeah. okay then for y'all to cry. It's okay to sh- express your feelings, and that's yes. what he did. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that so much. Like men can feel as more as as, as females or well, as ladies, we can feel. They feel as well. And right. he yeah. just unconditionally loved his sisters and just want them to be together. Right. 
Yeah. Jasmine gonna make me cry, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I know, I can Let's see. talk about the fashion. Let's talk about like, the fashion. fashion, ladies, because we have so much fashion moments. We gotta talk about this. I know. The coat. I'm gonna be real with y'all. My favorite fashion. Well, I mean, Marlo, of course, looked gorgeous after the makeover, but you know what my favorite fashion moment was? Is when they got into the argument in the closet and Danny Bree. had that light brown, like, sweat the suit camel. on. And was, yes. Ooh. Yes. In the flats. I was yes. like, she looks gorgeous right now. I know. That was my favorite fashion moment. Bree. I love it. That was one of mine, too. She just looked so casual and laid back. <laughs> yes. And I was looking at that. I was like, how? Because I'm always amazed when someone looks so chic and so casual because I always if I tried to pull that off, I would look like I had just rolled out of bed. Like it just looks perpetually like pajamas if I'm in anything casual, but she managed to look like stylish and chic. And I, I totally agree, Brie. I loved that. I thought she looked and it looked so good with her skin. Oh my, I just, she looked gorgeous. Mm. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I wouldn't forget. I took a picture of it. So it was the, because I was like, I just forget things. It was the scene when Danny, when they were going sledding. I really like that big, because I love a big comfy sweater. So I really like that cable neck, cable uh, knit, white. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the coat. The with the coat. With this red, oh, this black, too. like plaid, like jacket. I was yes. like, the braided gold hoops. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I really... I was like, I would love to look that good in that, but I was right. like, that it just looks comfortable, but also like beautiful, all the colors. And the um, cut the of that coat was gorgeous. <sighs> it was like flowy at the bottom and it was belted yes. with that really chic belt. Ooh, yes. yes. So cute. I love that. Yeah, that, that was definitely my favorite scene too. Like, I just need to know who, I want to know if there are different um, designers on every mahogany film because if they're the same person, I just need to know. Can you come <laughs> on to the podcast? We gotta talk about this because we need to know where you get these clothes from. Yeah, and then we need to know how to style everybody because can we get you know some sample sizes? Like, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Even seeing Marlo go from like keeping her hair back all the time yes. to mm-hmm. wearing it down, and it's the cute bob. I was like, oh, I love this for her. Like, she looked. She looked stunning. You could just see her face. Her face looked different, you know, from yeah. like being pulled back all the time. So, yeah. And you those could tell my- she felt different, you know, like it just she gave did. her that little spark back, that confidence. I even loved at the yeah. very end, I loved Danny's green dress that she wore on the talk show. I thought that was beautiful. But even yes. when Marlo was on the couch watching the talk show and she had on her purple sweater and the plaid pants that were very like a dark, I guess it was like navy green and purple and it was a very like subtle, but it was a very subtle plaid. Like you had to kind of look close to see it, but the purple yeah. sweater matched. Loved that. And even speaking of the sledding theme, you you couldn't see her outfit and I didn't really see it until she got on the, till Marlo got on the, on the sled and went down the hill, but she was wearing like a green coat that I really liked. And her pants were also green, but they were a different shade of green. And I love a monochromatic moment. It's like kind of my thing. (laughs) So I loved that too. And I was kind and I was kind of looking at the screen like, man, you couldn't give me a full body shot so I could see these, the full Mm -hmm. color of these pants in this green jacket really. But yeah, so many great fashion moments. They looked gorgeous. They, they both looked gorgeous. Definitely. Man. This movie, Hallmarkies, if y'all listening, please, during the holiday time, take a, just sit down two hours with your, you know, your favorite cocoa with some popcorn and watch the holiday stocking with your family. Yes, yes Because please. this will definitely move you. This will start a conversation about charity, about rekindling old memories and traditions, starting it, starting it back up. Like, this is the movie for you guys. And also healing. Shout out, like, a lot of the movies that I've watched between, like, Lifetime, Hallmark, and Up TV, there have been some some movies with some real nuggets. Like, this one had charity in it. Up TV had a um, tiny, tiny home Christmas, which was all about building tiny houses. Like, 
I love like those like, you know, kind of just subtle messages that, you know, we tend to forget the holidays are about so much more and we may be blessed, but somebody out there, you know, in the, in the tiny home Christmas, there was like a dad who him and his kids were homeless and they built a tiny home for him. And I was like, Oh, I love this. So shout out to 2022. You know, it's, it's good to have the light fluffy and fun, but when we can get those messages to remember that like life is so much more than this, Hmm. I, I, I really like it. I really like, I loved that this one focused on charity and that it was a black man running it because that's real. That's realistic. There are so many men in our community that love Mm -hmm. and run charity organizations, support charity organizations. I just loved seeing a hero that looked like us Mm -hmm. doing that, you know? Yeah. Doing that important work. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great, great plot point to have, that yeah i've not seen you know in a movie where it's like you do a game but then you get to choose you know something to do to give back yeah and that's the thing it's everyone has different point of views or different issues different things that affect their life so Mm -hmm. they probably want to reach out to a certain group of people that maybe somebody else doesn't and then everyone can learn about different people's passions or different issues that the people that they're helping are facing and i think that's just it's just so smart. I don't know who wrote this movie, but that was a great idea. Absolutely. For yeah. For tradition. Yeah. Yeah. So go watch it, friends. Watch yeah. it. Yes. <laughs> we loved it. You'll enjoy it. You won't be disappointed at all, by the way. Yeah. That's right. And I can't wait for the next Mahogany film. I'm not sure when that's going to be dropping, but hopefully maybe in the springtime. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. I'd like a really fun New Year's one, but I doubt we'll get that. So we'll see. I feel like New Year's gets the shaft. Okay. I love New Year's. New possibilities. New Year, new me, whatever. I would I want them to put as much energy into New Year's movies, even if it's four of them, as everything else. (gasps) Agree. You never know. What if they revisit back either unthinkably good things or it could be to her with love or either girlfriendship and make it one of those films. I know I think we think they probably have their own, you know, trilogy happening, which they are, but either girlfriendship have like their um New Year's moment, you know. Yeah. I, 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 I never seen a go New Year. Do they have a go New Year? Like that's something that we could explore. I know. We don't Why know. can't we have a New Year's girl tr- girls trip type of movie? That'd be fun. That would be fun. Mary, if you're hearing this, we want a girlfriendship. <laughs> New Year. <laughs> if I have to come up to the winery, it's only two and a half hours drive. You no. Know? Yeah, you gotta go. Talk about it. I want the winery. You know, I want like what's our girl Cat Graham who occasionally will pop up. I want her making like a vision board. You know, she just got yes. a relationship. I'm not dating all year, and she's like making her Pinterest you know, vision board and printing it out on canvas. And then she goes out with her home girls and boom, you know, I don't know. (laughs) Enter Hallmark. I'd watch watch it. I'd watch that. that You hear this? We can you the perfect movie. (laughs) Just bring Brianna. Us four. We're we're just going to write it together and then we'll submit it to Hallmark. (laughs) Perfect. I'm down. But you need this movie in your lives. Yeah. Yes. Well, I feel like we should call it before Rachel yells at us for being too long. <laughs> we love you, we Rachel. We just had so we many things Rachel. to say. <laughs> yeah, yes. we love the movie. Yes. You know what, ladies? Where can people find you? Well, you can find me at Dory saying, Dunford. You know, they have to follow um, us. You know. They do have to follow us. I'm sure after this sparkling commentary, you really want to follow us all. Please. You can find me at Dory Benford on Twitter and also at All the Feels Pod on Twitter. And you should listen to the All the Feels podcast um, anywhere you get your podcasts. Our holiday bracket is almost done. Two more weeks and it's over. What about you, Anne? That's right. The holiday's coming to an end soon. Uh, You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at AWScott21. And I am Brie unabashedly 
on the social medias. If you just pull up something, you'll probably find me. I'm definitely on Instagram, although I am like not trying to be that active there right now. You know, it's December. I just want to hang out with my kids and watch my movies. Twitter, the TikTok, which has been kind of fun. (laughs) Yeah, find me. Follow me. Tell me what movies you've been enjoying. Let's talk. Let's talk. Yes. And you can definitely find me, Jasmine, at Shereem16 on Instagram and Twitter at S-H-R-E-E-M-1-6. And also make sure you're following the podcast at Hallmarky Pod and Hallmarky Podcast all over social media. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave us a rating and review. If you're listening on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, leave those comments as well. We also have a Patreon group that you can check out and join as low as $2 a month and a merch store with T public, you know, with T's uh, for your holiday needs. Cause I know we have seen them at the rom-com this past weekend. So make sure you grab some of those T's for the holiday season. Yes. Thanks for listening, everybody. Yes. See you back we'll here see next, you time. next time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>